I'm just itching to fire up this truck for the first time. But I need a few parts before I can do that. So in the meantime, I'm busy with a long list of small things that needs taking care of. Hey, how's it, you Oaks? And welcome back to my shop out here in the forest. And a special welcome to the new guys. My name is Duff, and I've been busy with this rat truck bolt for some time now. It's a 1951 Chevy cab sitting on a Nissan hardbody drivetrain from somewhere in the late 80s. Also got a bunch of parts from other cars involved here. <laughs> and uh, it's a full-on budget bolt. I'm aiming to have the truck finished and up and running for less than $1,500. We will see if I get there. So I've been making parts and using old bits and pieces and improvising as much as possible. I'm basically ready to try and fire up for the first time. But there's just a few small things I need before I can do that. And I need to do a shopping trip, go to town, buy a few things. Um, I also want to pick up a little bit of this green, blue-green paint to touch it up here and there. Play a little bit with improving my patina, if that's possible. So until I do my shopping trip, I only go to town like once a week or so. I've been busy with a few small things. Let me show you. So if you are a regular follower of my carrying-ons out here in the forest, you might recall that when I built this custom part of the grill, it stopped right here. It's always bothered me. Didn't like it. So I added this section. And did the same in the back, so I like it a whole lot better, I think it works now. I found this shiny little latch here in a box, so I popped that on to hold the bonnet or the hood down. But now I'm not sure that I like it anymore, <laughs> it's too shiny, maybe if I rust it up so that it can blend and sort of fade away. But it does work, it does hold the bonnet down. I was considering leather straps, but they don't really pull down tight. I'm not sure that it's going to work for me. So let's see. I need to do my windscreen soon, and that original piece that fits here is all busted up. So I just welded in this section. I made it up from a piece of square tubing, 1 inch or 25 mil. And then I just added some flat bars on each side that I cut back a little bit. So now I've got a nice landing for my glass. I found a go fast air filter at my local auto parts store. I made up this bottom part here from some pipe. So it's firmly bolted onto the carburetor. And I made it stand up quite tall for a specific reason. It's just for a bit of added fun, because now I could cut a hole in my wood. And we've got the air filter poking through, so that we can at least look fast. <laughs> I fitted the seat belts from the Nissan, just to make it street legal. They're working now. <laughs> I um, just added sort of a backing plate up there. Welded it in place with the stud, just to give it a little bit of extra strength. These ones are also from the Nissan donut truck. Down here I welded a 6mm quarter inch flat bar strap across. And my bolts are actually welded to that. And that's bracing it up nicely as well. Couldn't just bolt it straight to this thin material there. That would have been useless. So now I've got seat belts. That works like a proper law-abiding citizen. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm still planning to add a little bit of upholstery to my seats as well. But that'll be in the future at some point. <laughs> so while it's not my vision with this truck to have a lot of silliness going on, I did allow myself an exception. And I mounted this pump nozzle where the original filler hole used to be. 
it's permanently attached so it will live there but I can take it off by removing one bolt I've left a piece of the hose and it's currently just tied on here with some wire but I could take it off and just have it flopping around and dragging on the ground <laughs> like this if I wanted to get real silly well you do need a rear view mirror so that you can laugh at the cars behind you <laughs> so I just made a simple bracket and added the one from my Nissan donor truck so talking of mirrors I would like a side mirror as well this uh, bracket was hanging on my wall it's like I got the Fomoco badge on the bottom so it must have come off a Ford but this little ball thing that fits on here broke off so I tried welding a piece of round bar onto that ball that was still sitting in the socket on the old mirror and it worked <laughs> and from there things just kind of evolved to the point where I've now sculpted a similar looking bracket out of mild steel the things I do yeah, so like I said I'm not interested in doing claws and skeletal hands and silly things on this build now I've got an old school side mirror it's even got some dirt on it from the 60s um, I think a round one would have been the best but I still think this is pretty cool Vroom! Vroom! <laughs> you gotta have a gear lever that's too long that's just a rat rod thing isn't it um, I've made this one removable just attached here with some grub screws so I can take it off if I want to the knob I'm still looking for something nice in the meantime the old Nissan one has to do duty so I'm just busy adjusting the suspension she was sitting a little too low for these farm roads so I'm busy tightening up the torsion bar bolts so that we can have a slightly higher ride height in the front I did make a video about how this whole torsion bar front suspension works and how you can adjust it so I'll put a link here on the screen up here somewhere if you want to go check it out right so I've tried to adjust the same amount on each side so we should still be level let's drop her down and see where she sits I thought I might have to do this more than once but I think I'm pretty much in a good spot how much have we got here yeah that's more than six inches it's nearly seven inches I think I'm gonna settle for this for now you can always play with this down the line let's just make the suspension maybe work a little bit drive it a bit and then I can always fine-tune it later on I'm going to live with this for now. Well, maybe I should just add, for those guys who don't know, I live out there on a farm and it's dirt roads everywhere. They're not very good ones either. So yeah, I can't drop it too low. Otherwise, I'm just going to <laughs> get stuck. If I was living where there were tar roads around me, I'm sure you could have a sitting much lower. So I want this truck to be street legal here in South Africa and that means I have to run a number plate, license plate. Um, if you've got the connections to go and run it, <laughs> you're welcome. It's all above board. You'll see it's actually a Nissan. So um, I don't know. I don't want to fit it there. I mean, that's just killing the old grow. So I don't know. going to have to come up with another idea. I don't think... I want to fit my number plate anywhere on this grill. Mm. So what do you think of this plan? I've made a frame from angle bar. It's going to go here. I've made another bracket that's attached to the bottom of the grill. So now if I can just stick my two bolts in here. Something like that. 
it's going to sit there, it's very low, but if I eat something, it can just flip back. <laughs> I love it. It's a little skew, because the grill is a little skew, because it's just a rat rod. <laughs> you know what? I can almost be like, pull a James Bond move, I won't revolve, but I could add a lever inside the cab, and if you pull the lever, <laughs> but no, I mean, nobody can say that's not legal, you can see it. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to work great. Listen, if the skewness bothers you, I can always stick the jack in there and just bend this bottom part of the grill up a little bit and then it'll come more straight. <laughs> but I'm not going to bother. So whilst I'm playing with number plates, I fitted the back one as well. There's too much yellow here. I need to do something about that. This here on my spare wheel hump. <laughs> Tiny design flaw though. My number plate got in the way of the hole for the spare wheel spanner. So yeah, I got to cut off a hole in my number plate. I'm sorry officer. I promise I will never do it again. Oh, and this thing hides my number plate light. Let me put it on. There you go. So I thought that this yellow paint could be turned into some kind of a feature, but I think I was wrong, man. Yes, always trying to be clever. I told you. Well, just piss off, man. You know, in case you don't know, it's yellow because uh, this piece of steel, I scavenged it from the donut truck, which was painted yellow. So I think I'm just going to take it all off. It just doesn't look right. I'm going to turn it into dust. I'm going to leave some of it on and then I'll paint it the same blue green color as what remains on parts of the original truck and then we can see what that looks like and if I still don't like it I can just take it off completely and return it completely to rust yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do I think I might fine-tune it here and there a little bit still So let's leave it like that for now. I'm going to get some peroxide on there. Let it rust up some. Then we can reevaluate. Might fiddle with it a little bit more here and there. And then I'm going to paint some of that blue green paint over this yellow to get rid of it. If you want to know more about this peroxide treatment, I'll stick a link up here on the screen so you can check it out in one of my other videos. And then of course there's a few mechanical things I need to sort out and a few issues. This is one of them. This little clutch cylinder ain't what it used to be. So when I go to town again, I'm going to get a new one. I got all the brake pipes reconnected, got the air out of the system. So I've got good brakes again. Those small things, they take time and you don't really get to know about them or see them happening, but it needs to be done. I needed an overflow bottle for my radiator. And this is actually the only spot I could find. It was also the only bottle I could find. <laughs> I know the guys like to use all sorts of dramatical overflow bottles. 
But in the end, you can't even really see this one. I'm not gonna spend money or a lot of energy to find a fancy bottle on my budget built. This is gonna do the job just fine. So I just made a simple bracket with some flat bar and it's bolted on there. And then I've got a little bit of copper pipe going up and then connecting with the rubber hose. So it's actually kind of sitting on the wrong side of the outlet, but it's the only spot I could find. Let me get some antifreeze into this radiator so long. Oh no! Look at this! This welsh plug on the back of the engine has got holes in it or panels or something. It's pissing antifreeze. Ah! So now I am leaking antifreeze like crazy. <laughs> and now I've got antifreeze all over the place. Building cars is so much fun. So I'm just using a piece of mirror here. So I can see what's going on with this Wells plug. You have to look really carefully to see a tiny panel. So I got two choices now. I can either just uh, put some epoxy over the whole thing and hope it lasts or do the right thing and take it out and replace it. So this piece of shit thing is not going to come out without me donating some blood first already taken out the battery so I can get better access. No man, I'm busy poking myself full of holes here. Bloody hell. Got you, you piece of shit. This poor thing was severely corroded. I mean, it was so, so thin, yeah, it just basically broke away. Another thing to add to my shopping list. And maybe some band-aids too. <laughs> so my shopping list is growing. Apart from a wash plug, I need all sorts of things. I need some fresh fuel, I need some more antifreeze, and a whole list of things. And I'd like to get this thing started now, man. So I'm gonna go off on a trip to town. Um, let me know if you'd like to come with on a little road trip so you can see what my part of the world looks like. Um, and then I'll take you with me in the next video. Oh, by the way, maybe you've noticed something has changed. I went home for lunch. And the wife got hold of me and she managed to hold me down long enough to cut my face. I did manage to run away before she could cut my goatee though. Hey you guys, thanks for spending time with me out here in the shop. I enjoyed it. So I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a lucky one.